On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back in the warehouse with my 2009 Nissan Cube, and today we're gonna put the transmission in. What is going on, guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, I'm here with my Nissan Cube that I got for a steal because I had a bad transmission. And then I went and bought a new transmission. And in one of the last videos, we got the transmission out. And it's funny, in the video after that, somebody commented, anything you can do to not put a transmission back in this car. That's, that was my thought exactly. I didn't want to do it either. But it's time to get it done. So we've got the new transmission on the transmission jack. And we're going to clean out the cooler. We should be ready to stab this thing. Cooler first, though. So we've got our transmission fluid to coolant cooler here. Let's say fluid to fluid cooler, water to water cooler. And what we're going to do is pull out this banjo bolt fitting and then shove our cooler clean in that hose. And that will let us blast this out so that we have a nice clean starting point. Sometimes you can screw this thing on, this uh, cooler clean bottle, but I think here we should just rip the end off and then stick the hose directly in there. It's like the tiniest cooler of all time. So we'll just shove this thing up in there and blast. Wait, upside down or directions? Hold can't upright. Hopefully we don't lose too much, but this is gonna make a mess. Oh! It's almost clear. That's some nice clean fluid. Then we'll blast this out with some air. I think we'll be good to go. We're flushed. Everything's zip tied out of the way. Let's stick this thing in. It is go time. I've got Sky here to help. But you gotta have four hands, honestly. It's just, you can do it without, but it's just nice to have four hands for the twist and shove. and I had the transmission in because we were just knocking it out. It was that one-two punch. We had it aligned. We were putting the bolts in. Yeah. And I was like, remember that torque converter nut I dropped and it's inside behind the flywheel? <laughs> Still there. I'm glad we didn't start the thing. Yeah. No, that would have been bad. <laughs> it would have broke the case. Yep. Anyway, uh, you know, don't forget if you drop the bolt inside behind the flex plate because it's a whole thing. And the magnet wouldn't reach. Nothing would reach. But I got it out. So I got... The last of the four, we're ready to stick it back in. We'll push the button. Yep. Okay, we're just gonna push the button and hope. Go in! Oh. Didn't work. No. And we're back, the transmission is finally mated to the engine on round two, uh, the bolts are in. So now it's basically just reassembling everything. So we're gonna put the axles back in, uh, start mounting everything, start wiring it. I do have the main connector on because that one's uh, kind of tricky. So I've got the ground strap on, uh, one bolt in the cooler and the main connector and that upper speed sensor that sits underneath the cooler. Uh, that's basically the stuff that's impossible to get to after the cooler is actually mounted But first we got to crawl up top and do the top mount and obviously there's no way to do that Except the ladder because the transmission has to be supported while you put the mount together I'm just about through doing all the little stuff. That's really hard to show you on camera It's just a whole bunch of little bolts like the uh, transmission cooler and uh, wires stuff like that That's all hooked back up, but there was a bit of an issue when the starter came out. I found out the oil pressure sensor had been broken off. 
So I had to go buy a new oil pressure sensor, a quick O'Reilly's McDonald's run. That's a combo right there. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a Taco Bell O'Reilly's? But uh, anyway, I got a new oil pressure sensor. They had it in stock, which was awesome. And all I have to do is mount the starter in that. Fill it with fluid. Let's start this thing after I eat. There's our old broken oil pressure sensor. And here is our nice new oil pressure sensor and the 27 millimeter socket. We need to install it. And I also picked up CVT fluid from O'Reilly's. Hopefully they didn't drain down too much of this thing, even though they put a note on there saying they did. And over here we have a big selection of crush washers I used to replace the cooler crush washers. So I'm gonna slap the oil pressure switch sensor in there, whichever one it is, it's probably actually just a switch for a dummy light and we can start this thing. Well, pour one out for the homie. Unfortunately, we cannot use the Bluetooth funnel today because the dipstick on the CVT is like this big. So we've got the transmission funnel in there. You can see that I'm ready to fill this thing. It's completely empty. Uh, we dumped the pan out and everything, cleaned everything up down there. And that oil pressure sender took forever to get in there. So weirdly, like the threads weren't exactly right. I had to clean the threads. It was a whole mess and I had to use the old one as a chaser like 10 times, but hey, we're ready. Let's pour some fluid in here and then we'll probably run back to O'Reilly's buy engine oil and a filter because I haven't done that yet and do this engine mount. Hopefully they have it, but this engine mount was gone. Totally cracked. If you can see right there on top, look at that crack. I can open it with my finger, so super bad. Never put this in anything before. Pretty sweet. All right, what came out of this transmission versus what's going in it? There's a huge difference. This stuff is basically like water and it's absolutely clear. The pour. Uh, what came out of it was jet black. Pretty funny. Whoop. That's how fast you can pour a cord in. That stuff is like zero W40. It's like what you put in a Honda engine oil. Pretty crazy. Anyway, this is the third quart. One more to put in. I'll check it. Hopefully we're getting close. Obviously the converter's still full, so we've gotta be about there. All right, first start, let's see if it works. Oop, not enough battery power. That's what happens when you try to start it on the jump pack. Now with two jump packs. Ooh, that's an interesting sound. This car was so angry, but we had 12 transmission faults. Uh, let's see the report here. What all was wrong? Okay, uh, speed sensor, outputs, <laughs> input speed sensor, output speed sensor, can calm, all of the failures. All right, let's clear all the codes. Quick erase. Hopefully after this, all these lights disappear off the dash and we're good to go. Fluid level's perfect. Uh, it does run in reverse and drive, so no transmission codes. Let's take a look one more time. There we go. Put some wheels on this bad boy. All new fluid, so let's clear the deterioration. And we've got all zeros now. I think we're just all good here. Let's see if there's anything else that's upset about. Hey, I think it's time to drive. Disregard, we have an interesting new problem. A geyser coming out of that little hose that goes down to the cooler. And I think that hose just came loose. So I'm just gonna snip it and then uh, shorten it up a little bit and slide it back on. Let's cool this thing down. While the engine cools back down and the geyser continues, which is pretty funny. Ooh, so warm. I grabbed engine oil too, uh, O'Reilly Syntec, because this is what I'm running in pretty much all the flip cars. It's a great oil. It, it is Syntec, rebranded with, uh, with O'Reilly and a Wix filter. We'll get the frame off of this thing and put the wheel well liner back in, put the battery box back in, and I'll fix my coolant leak. Then we're good to go. <laughs> the Nissan. Keeps on giving. I know you're all thinking, jukes are always very well cared for. And uh, I mean, who would ever let a crush washer get just destroyed until there was really nothing left of it? Couldn't have been a, a cube owner. Did I say juke? I meant cube. Same, same, same. I meant the same thing. Anyway, can't even get the crush washer off because it's down to being like a piece of hair. And it's incredibly hot, so hot least leaky this thing's been for a long time because you can see that it was it had been leaking from the pan everything had been leaking on this thing just fun doesn't stop i'm telling you the party don't start till i walk in and i usually don't leave until the thing ends but in the meantime i replaced the crush washers 
and in between time, I do an oil change. All right, back to the Bluetooth. This is some thin oil for this pour, but we got it. Oh, yes. I know I'm a little far away, but I wish you guys were right here to see that. Didn't miss one drop. I'd say it's perfect. Start it, check it one more time. Oil change, coolant link fixed. I mean, this thing's got everything but gas. So let's see if it moves. Running over my air hose. All right. I'm saying battery tray time. Oh, it has a hole in the exhaust. I remember that. <laughs> this, is, this is a cube race car. This is the cube race car. Also, the air works. The air works great. I'm sure the heat works because the cooling system works great. No more coolant leak. Good. Holding up. All right, let's button it up. A complete cube. Everything is back together. Let's go to the gas station and fill this thing up, assuming it starts now that the battery is back in. I charged the battery for a while, and it looks like the battery does work, and it looks like there's no codes. Let's go get this thing some hoop de la gasolina. So I've never driven a cube before. This is a new experience. You sit like incredibly low in this thing. I mean, I'm cool with it. I like my cars to sit low, but really low. It feels like it kind of like rolls over you. We're gonna have to go drive this for a bit. The brakes are covered in rust right now. Quick light check. I think everything works. Oh, one fog light's out. One marker is out. Not as good as I thought. The back does look great. All right, solved that fog light problem already. Shut them off. <laughs> Right. There's the locks. That exhaust leak is hilarious. She's rolling. I have to stop a few times to get these brakes all cleaned up. There are no lights on the dash. I'm pretty impressed, Nissan. I didn't expect it to come out like perfect. Although we did replace a lot of stuff. New oil pressure sender, uh, all the fluids, transmission. There's really no reason anything should be wrong with it. We're gonna make a big stop for 40. It's funny, <laughs> good old RPM never changing. We now have 63 miles of range, it's going down fast. Wow, this thing thinks it's getting 40 miles a gallon out on the highway, and I kind of believe it. Got the windows down. We're going out for the long cruise tonight. It's perfect outside. Might as well put all the miles on it. TPMS light just came on, so I came back to investigate our situation here. Need to put the Christmas trees back in the wheel well liner. There's uh, like two of them missing. It might be slightly low. Can't tell. And the exhaust is rattling. I better put my foot on it. Where's it at? <laughs> Exhaust solved. Just put your foot on it. Anyway, it probably needs one of the rubber hangers. First, off to the gas station to grab something to drink. Just because I want to keep driving the car around. Checked all the tire pressures. One was at 50 for some reason. So I dropped it back down to 38 to match all the others. Hopefully, there's no more TPMS light. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching the Cube is basically ready to go except for the windshield which i guess we'll move to hopefully tomorrow and uh, then i'll investigate that exhaust leak see if it's something that can be easily knocked out if not it's not that big of a deal uh it does sound like it's towards the back so it shouldn't be affecting how the engine runs we're all good don't forget to head on over to shop watch where you get cool shirts not like this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i'll talk to you next time pretty pumped to have the cube done mostly pumped because the cube's done leaking We've stopped all the leaks on the engine. All the seals are good. All of the new crush washers are in there. That thing has just left huge piles of oil everywhere it's ever been parked. They are over there, they were over here. It took forever to clean up the messes. So pumped. It's been sitting there for 20, 30 minutes. There's not even one drop pumped. I'll come back in the morning and make sure 
but everything's cleaned up. Our core is there with all the junk that came off of it, ready to go back. And uh, we'll throw the floor mats in it. Uh, it's ready. That's it. Can't wait to see it leave. <laughs>